Aloha and welcome to Holistic Wellness Revealed. I'm Letitia Sharp and I'm your host today as we welcome Dr. Melissa Wiki, who is an acupuncturist, Chinese medicine, wellness, massage, tai chi practitioner, and um, healer. Welcome, Melissa. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here with you. I'm so happy to have you. And I can just, I really want to just say how much I love calling you a doctor. <laughs> having known you from when you were just a young massage therapist just out of school and working together so so many years and actually a couple decades ago <laughs> so congratulations on that now being well established in that practice and um, that's part of why I really felt that you would be one of my perfect um, yes, to be able to talk about this subject and acupuncture. There's so much questions, so many questions around what this is for people and so many fears that are valid. They're valid fears. And um, they also feel like there can be so much light brought to those fears if they're put in the in the right context. So I'm excited to be able to have this conversation with you and start this part one. We will have a part two and go even more in depth. So um, talk to me about a little bit about how you were called to do acupuncture and what really sparked your interest to be able, because this is a long journey, um, to be able yeah. to talk about it. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's see. I would have to say... The beginning happened around when I turned 21. Um, I think a lot of young people, you know, entering adulthood have these sort of awakenings and society doesn't really have a place to um, to fit them in to, to life, you know? And I feel like back in the day, long time ago, there was always these rites of passage that would sort of honor these transitions, you know, in different life phases. And, and I just, feel like I was due for one. And so part of my journey just created that for myself. And so I ended up actually getting a little bit, um, a little bit out of whack, a little bit sick, a little bit not balanced in my mind and my body. And um, I, it took me a long time to kind of get my feet back on the ground, but I was guided to go to massage school and just putting my hands on people again. Uh, it sort of forced me to deal with a lot of a lot of things that I, I had inside of me. Um, and I came to understand, you know, what empathy means, you know, when you put your hands on somebody, you feel them, but you also feel everything inside yourself. And the only thing that kind of kept me um, going through it was just continuing to show up, even though it was so awkward. I felt so just out of place, awkward. I felt sorry for the people who had to have me as their therapist, you know, but all of that is that sort of that internal programming that, you know, it's unconscious, you don't know where it begins, but little by little by little, you know, I started to believe maybe I'm not as bad as I think I am. Maybe it's not, you know, as terrible, you know, and, and then I started to believe maybe it's actually good. Maybe I can help people, you know? <laughs> so, um, I was going to the university of Hawaii, um, and I, had decided to do pre-med basically kinesiology with a help with a focus of exercise, um, exercise science, uh, wellness, lifestyle management. And um, I was set to go to medical school. And then as part of my curriculum, I had to take a Tai Chi class. And after I took the Tai Chi class, um, I just realized, wow, there is a lot I don't know. You know, there's a lot I don't understand. And I was just drawn to it. And I wanted to know more about the the way that the Chinese um, historically viewed things, you know, in terms of health and wellness. And it really, really resonated with my way of understanding things. Um, instead of putting a magnifying glass on the disease, you zoom out and try to understand the relationships of all of the, the parts involved. And so Tai Chi practice sort of helped me ground myself in my own body, helped me to sort of um, smooth out uh, turbulent emotions that would get in the way of like my clear thinking. And it helped me to be able to just 
read and think and study and, and understand, and it continues to. So um, after I graduated from UH, I went to uh, the Institute for Clinical Acupuncture and Oriental Medicine in Chinatown in Honolulu. And that was a four-year course of study. And uh, then I moved out of Hawaii, gosh, 2016, got licensed and opened up my practice. That's a beautiful, that's beautiful. So really <laughs> what I hear you speaking to is how your own journey of healing is what brought you to this place of being able to provide this for others. Yes, I, I think ultimately, like anyone in the healing arts kind of has to operate from that point, right? It's like, we're handed down these truths and this, you know, all these things to learn, but we still have to filter it through our own experience and understanding. And when you've been in a really low place in your life, um, you're able and come out of it, you can meet people, you know, there and reassure them, you know, they're not alone. And there's nothing to fear and you're going to make it, and, you know, because, you know, you did it, you know, you believe in it. And, and, you know, speaking to Chinese medicine, you know, having chi, you know, the concept of chi be such a central component of Chinese medicine, understanding how acupuncture works and how, um, how things move inside. I feel like it has a lot to do with just our understanding of physical reality you know there's like subtle energy and then there's dense energy you know in the chinese um chinese medicine philosophy it, it just takes into account uh the subtler things you know that we may not be able to discern with our tools at this time but they had such a um they had they placed such a high value on inner feeling inner hearing inner seeing that when you know in the origins of acupuncture and everything like what came first like the points or the channels how did how did this happen um people would sit in meditation and they're um you know when you're really really quiet you feel things differently in your body you can see things you know and and if it's a matter of survival if like i am quiet and nothing can hear me or feel me breathing i'm probably not going to get eaten by a wild animal or something <laughs> right so I think it, it sort of unlocked a, a certain level of um, perception that is oftentimes uh, not accessible today to most. So that was sort of the origin of of it. And now it's we have it's up to us to rediscover that inside of ourselves. So, yeah. And I mean, I like how because on this show, a lot of the things that we discuss is holistic in the sense of all parts of ourselves being able to work together as a one whole being, as a one whole unit, um, a one whole human. <laughs> and um, what you mentioned a couple of times now is the chi, which is energy, right? And mm -hmm. that goes in all parts of ourselves that's physical that's mental that's emotional that's spiritual um mm -hmm. and so how does that relate to the acupuncture like how does that how can you find a way to make that tangible sure um well when when i was in school and we were learning all about you know how do you generate chi? Basically, you have to kind of expand your, your perception of, of your organs and what they're capable of. It's not just, you know, substances, like there's functions and things that, that happen that are sort of magical, no matter, you know, how, how much you break it down. But basically, you, your air from your lungs mixes with the, the energy in your heart and your blood to, you know, it, it condenses and distills into various kinds of fluid and, and energy and warmth in your body. And then your body's organizational systems, all the different channels, there's many different kinds, they go to different depths within the body. And then on the surface of the body is um, the, the channels and the, the acupuncture points, which are the energy is more accessible. And so my teacher would say the most powerful points are between the elbows and the fingertips and the knees and the toes. And so in the classical literature, they'll describe the flowing of the energy like as from like a well 
to a, a stream, to a river, to a sea, you know, as it moves towards the center of the body. And so it's interesting to think about that in, in terms of, you know, our, our breathing and our movements and, and how our mind is going to influence the way that all of these things move and flow inside of our bodies. I don't know if that, that was an answer. To no, the that was a great explanation. <laughs> I love how it was all water. So that's really easy to be able to visualize and to kind of grab onto, you know, like, ooh, uh, if you feel like that energy, the chi uh, is water that's flowing and you can choose all different kinds of bodies of water, then that's really easy to be able to, even for someone just beginning who maybe has never even considered doing acupuncture. Mm -hmm. um, so that brings me to what are, you've mentioned organs and depths and levels. So when I, and I want you to correct me if I've been saying this wrong for all <laughs> these years. People ask me all the time, can, should I get acupuncture? Should I get acupuncture? And I'm like, sure. They're like, well, what's it good for? And I always say that acupuncture is, um, really works with the organs. Mm -hmm. Um, and that every part of our body, like every ailment or hurt or anything that's not in ease and in health is coming from some organ. I mean, even if it's your skin, right? So um, talk, is that how it works? I mean, I know there's two really big components. There's the, the herbal side and then there's the body side. And I know that they go together, but let's talk about the organ side. Sure. Um, I One of my favorite visuals for understanding organs and energy and the channels and everything is is like um like a Wi-Fi router. Like each organ has like a network that it has to cover on the body. And so if the signal is strong and clear and unobstructed, there's like, you know, good range, good coverage, you can do everything. If it gets obstructed by cold or, you know, cold causes constriction, dampness, heaviness, phlegminess can like block, you know, smooth transition. If it's too hot, things get crazy, you know, it distorts the communication between the organ and and the you know network. Um, when we put acupuncture needles in to the points, it it's making like a tiny injury in the body. And the body's so intelligent, it just knows I'm gonna go to that place and I'm gonna check it out. I'm gonna fill up the hole and we're gonna we're gonna make this better. Just that increased circulation can help to organize uh, distorted patterns within the body. So oftentimes when there's you know, superficial disruptions in the energy system that you may not even have any like uh, symptoms from yet. It can prevent them from penetrating into a deeper, more substantial layer of the body where um, where you might have a symptom. So it's beneficial to get acupuncture on a semi-regular basis just to kind of keep everything communicating well. It's like just kind of flushing the system of... Um, Distortion is kind of like how I like to think about it, like little lightning rods that just sort of, they channel and uh, organize things. So <laughs> that's great. And that brings it really, um, really modern, right? That brings us to our modern times of something that people deal with daily here in the United States anyways. Um, so would you say that so, and, and you said maintenance basically mm -hmm. is a good way to be able to keep those channels clear. And yeah. what if, say, I deal with a lot of people with injuries and mm -hmm. um, for pain and is, what part does acupuncture play in pain management? Certainly. No, that's a really good, that's a really good point because it's a huge part of what I, uh, what I treat is pain. Um, what, the way I was taught, pain equals stagnation. Something's not flowing. Something's not receiving enough oxygen. Wastes are collecting. It's just not not in the, the flow properly. When we um, put a needle in there, it can sort of disperse a, a stagnant area. Um, and like I, how I mentioned before, it just sort of calls on all of the body systems to come and check it out and, and repair things. It will The increased circulation will speed healing, essentially. And it can 
a lot of times, like, especially where I live now in the Pacific Northwest, it's damp and it's cold. So, you know, it's like when you're damp and cold, you kind of just want to like curl up and, you know, and your energy kind of does that on the inside. So a lot of people have cold hands, cold feet and stuff. And so when you do acupuncture out on the hands and the feet, it sort of brings people more deeply into their bodies so that the, the, you know, range of their energy is a little bit broader. Um, but as far as pain goes, it's like the most tender places when we're, when I'm searching for what points to choose, I will just, you know, use my hands and palpate and then like, you know, ask people, okay, how's that? You know, ooh. and usually it's like, there's a couple collection points where, uh, you know, in, in Chinese, the, the word acupuncture point means hole. So it's these little holes in between the bones and the muscles and the tendons where things can accumulate. So that's why when you put an acupuncture needle there, it sort of has a, a bigger effect on the area around it, sort of like an, an eddy in a way. So it can disperse the stagnation and then reintegrate the area into the greater circulation, which will eventually, you know, make the pain go away. So right. Because it brings the the healing, um, the healing fluids that our body already has inside, right? Exactly. And, you know, on top of it, there's a million lenses that you could use to, to look at the process with, but it stimulates certain neurotransmitters, you know, in the brain that help, you know, relieve pain, essentially. Um, so mm -hmm. that's a, that's a really wonderful side effect as well. And, and there's a feeling of um, ease and relaxation that people describe when they get acupuncture that is different, a little different than the feeling of massage. It's a little different than the feeling of other things. Um, and it helps people who might not really like know too much about their energy. You know, oh, it just seems like woo or it's like not real, or, you know, whatever. But it starts to, you start to build a relationship with how you feel, you know, which is the beginning of self-healing. I think when you really start to take, you know, stock of how you're feeling and and refine and refine and refine how you feel. Um, that's where it's at. The more you understand and more right. you think. Bro yeah, broadening that awareness, that self-awareness. Mm -hmm. um, and it sounds like it almost has that uh, like anti-anxiety or that it, it's affecting the nervous system in a way that is just so calming. Yeah, well, you know, you think about you know, heat, energy, anxiety, it goes up, right? It's like, right. you're like getting out of your body and you just poke a couple of holes and then. Psh, oh, <laughs> all right. Oh, I like that. It just okay. sort of fizzes out. <laughs> it's just, yeah, that's, that's kind of how it is, you know? And then once you start to understand, you know, the way that you hold yourself in the day, the, the habitual postures you find yourself in and try to come back to neutral posture with your legs rooted, you know, your you want a warm belly and a cool head. And if we can manage that, we're going to be okay as we age. <laughs> so when uh, those get flip-flopped, then we get all kinds of problems. That brings me to uh, the actual, the organs. Yeah. So like, say somebody says that they have, you know, chronic or even acute, I guess, but say they have something like an ulcer. Yeah. Um, how could acupuncture, and I know it's getting super, you can't say generally for all people, but say something like an ulcer, they constantly have digestive issues or something like that. Those are actually two completely different things, probably. Well, there, you know, it impacts digestion, it impacts the way that you can make, make energy out of food if it's painful and uncomfortable. Um, well, the ulcer situation, you can definitely sort of like shunt energy to that digestive layer through acupuncture and just kind of help neutralize, you know, uh, tension and distortion. But of course, you have to um, talk to the person about how they're eating. A lot of times it's emotional. You know, that's there's the external factors like you're in a cold wind and it's damp and all this stuff. And then there's the internal factors, which is like we're talking about organs here and their other jobs. So they each have a responsibility to process a different emotion. So the lungs, uh, they process grief and crying and sadness. And when we don't fully grieve, we can't fully breathe, you know, and then you end up not being able to have enough chi to do everything. You get kind of deficient over time. And then um, say the the kidneys, they govern fear and like mastering the unknown and uh, 
you know, how do you respond? What are you afraid of? You know, leaning into that, is it underlying everything that you do? You know, is there some tension that, you know, and, um, the, a big one is liver is uh, liver processes anger, you know, and there's a, a place for anger. Like we need to feel angry about certain things, but if we feel angry about everything, or it's just like out of proportion with, um, with, a, you know, everything else, then it's really toxic. And so um, the liver really thrives with like exercise, action, doing physical discipline. And then it's, it can, it can, it's responsible for the free flow of energy everywhere in the body. And so once, you know, the, the anger is processed, then you can get everywhere you need to go in your body and you don't get all caught up in the same, you know, self-abusive patterns, <laughs> what happens, but. Yeah, I love, love, love that you brought that forward. Um, the emotional uh, jobs of our organs and how those not being dealt with can lead to some really serious issues and how tying that in with the energy of the spirit, of the body, of the outside, the physical part, and also our mental patterns of what we do and how that can all just plays a part of these more serious um, issues that can come up that we see people dealing with all the time because it all has an origin, right? It's true. It's true. And, and when, you know, when you decide to kind of go down the path of self-healing and doing things like, you know, you can get the diagnosis, whatever, you still have to figure out what it means to you. You know, you can do everything that everybody says, but it's like, still you have to, there's a lot you can do. You have to start being able to be with yourself, you know, and, and that's the beginning. I think that's the thing that's scary for a lot of people is, you know, being alone with yourself. <laughs> but, you know, when you, when you have practice like Tai Chi, or if you have, you know, a stillness practice where you start to allow your feelings to be felt fully then you develop great compassion for yourself. You know, it, it just, it comes. And then that allows things to let go, you know, and this connection with the earth, you know, remembering our relationship with the earth um, through our posture, through our breathing, just remembering on a regular basis, uh, it helps, you know, we're not just out here on our own. You know, we have all the support that we need and um, we just need to learn how to take care of ourselves. So, <laughs> It's a complicated thing, but it's also really simple. <laughs> yeah, it, it. I mean, I just, I really, I really enjoy being able to hear that because we talk a lot about that on this show too, is um, being with ourselves and really recognizing who we are and how we are and loving ourselves through that. That's mm -hmm. such a huge component to uh, our healthy living basically our healthy existence and being able to bring that essence forward. Um, also, there's that part that you were talking about where you're, you're moving forward through this and you're finding these, these channels, not just on the outside, but the inside to be mm -hmm. able to um, just to be able to break through, to have these breakthroughs. And that's mm -hmm. fascinating. That's fast. And also another thing that I want to highlight that you brought up, that's such an amazing point, is really taking ownership of how you feel. And it's really feels safe and easy to let somebody else tell us how we are. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are looking for that and mm -hmm. search all over. But I, I feel like what they don't get is that that's not you. What they're telling you isn't you. Like I can tell people that come to me day and night for 25 years that, oh, you know, you need to work on this fear. Mm -hmm. And maybe if they look inside and they're like, actually, I'm really not afraid of that. Right. <laughs> it has been something completely different. You know, it's a trauma of this and it's actually grief. I'd be like, oh, oh my gosh. Well, thank you for educating me. But, you know, just not succumbing to 
the other people's view of who you are, which is such an important reason to go inside, like what you're saying. That's where it really starts. I, I feel that I feel it's a natural evolution of the spirit. You know, I think the the more we understand, the more grounded we are, the stronger we are. And then it's just the natural sort of confidence in who we are in our inner goodness. It's what, you know, is shining through instead of all of the, the things that we're afraid of, you know? Yeah. So speaking <laughs> of fear, I really want to touch on this before yeah. we do. Um, the end, uh, the completion of this episode. What about people who are so afraid of needles? Okay, so for those of you who are afraid of needles, I um, I want you to know the needles we use now are all single use, sterile. They come in a little package like this. Sometimes they're in a ten pack, and then look at how tiny that is. You can barely see it. You could fit like at least 20 of these in the tip of the, of the hollow, hollow tip hypodermic needles they give to shots. They're like very fine pieces of, of like wire, very, very fine. And um, it doesn't feel like pain. It feels like sensation. And sometimes you feel nothing, but sometimes you'll put a needle in one place and you'll feel it somewhere else. And then during the course of a treatment, you might have needles communicating. Bup, 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 bup. It's really, it's really strange. But um, it's uh, it's something to experience. And letting go of that fear and just having a little bit more openness about the experience of intensity. You know, it doesn't all have to hurt. Some things can be intensely, you know, pleasurable. Some things can be intensely, you know, uh, vibrating. There's a bunch of different ways. And and um, the thing that happens when the needles are in for a while is that you just come back to homeostasis. You get back in the middle and the, the intensity comes and it levels out. And um, then the feelings change. And that's all we can hope for when we're not feeling good <laughs> is that they change. <laughs> so if somebody does have a fear of needles and they're okay with um, the sanitation portion, but they're just, they have this feeling where they just don't know why they just are so afraid of needles. What would be your advice of how maybe something they can ask their acupuncturist or maybe something that they can talk to them about to be able to help them um, bridge that gap? between the fear and finding that homeostasis? That's that's a great point. I think the most important thing is to find a person who your body trusts. You're in their presence, you feel comfortable with them, and you feel like there's a, an, a trust that you don't really understand, but it's there, you feel comfortable with them. That's the most important starting point for finding somebody who um, you'd like to experience acupuncture with because everybody has a different feeling. Everybody has a different understanding and a different style of practice. And everybody's, you know, I like to think everybody's bringing the best of themselves to it, but we all respond to different personalities and approaches. So I think just, you have to be willing to, to try and meet a couple people. A really good thing to do, I think, is to go to an acupuncture school and go into the school's clinic because then it's a, a low cost way to, ask a bunch of questions. You know, these students need to know the answers. It helps them. It helps the teachers teach. And then you get to see what a lot of different personalities and, and approaches are like. So um, I think the first thing is you have to be open, <laughs> to open up a little bit and have faith that not all penetration is bad. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, well, we're getting to that time where this part one of our conversation is coming to completion. And I'm just, I'm so grateful for your time and for your knowledge and for just your candid nature of really sharing all of the ins and outs of this um, sacred healing art of acupuncture and how it can help on so many levels with our holistic beings. Um, thank you so much, Melissa, for joining so us. Welcome. It was my pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. And I look forward to the next time we bring you on and have some more juicy content <laughs> about <laughs> acupuncture. Um, thank you. <laughs>
Thank you so much also to Think Tech Hawaii for uh, providing this platform for us to be able to have these conversations and bring this information to our viewers. And thank you immensely to all the donors and sponsors for helping us keep this going. Um, until we meet again, aloha and mahalo. <laughs>